Hello, and welcome to Python for Everybody and another code walkthrough. So in this one, we're going to walk through a chapter 16 diagram. Let's take a look at it. So this is a situation where we're going to be talking to some OpenStreetMap data through an API, through a proxy to that API, and we're going to write a, a bit of code that's going to repeatedly pull this stuff down. Now, these APIs are notoriously slow, expensive, difficult, uh, and sometimes even sort of unreliable. If you hit a rate limit, it starts blowing up on you. So we want this to be a restartable process. So wh what we're going to do is write this code called geoload.py, and it is going to read a file that is the list of the locations we ultimately want to have. And when you're doing your homework, you got to edit this file. But the idea is, is that this geoload is going to read all the locations we want, and then it's starting to pull them down, and then it's going to simply insert the JSON into this geodata SQLite file. And then if this, this part here is a restartable process, the geoload is a restartable process. And we'll, when we do it, we'll start it a couple of times. And it's smart enough to know the things it already has and not start from the beginning over and over. That's why it's a restartable process. And at any given point, we can, in a sense, view and visualize the current contents of this database with geodump.py. So that reads the database and it produces a little file called where.js. It also writes a little debug output. And then that where.js is read into when you open a browser, this file where.html opens in a browser and then it reads the where.js and then it visualizes it. And that's really cool. So, you know, at some point you're supposed to put your own location in where.data and then show in the visualization that you were able to get your location. So without further ado, let's go take a look at the code. So the code you're going to need to use is opengeo.zip. You download this open, you download www.pyfree.com slash code three slash opengeo.zip. And then you open that into a folder and you will have a folder called opengeo. So if I'm looking at my current folder of OpenGeo, you can see that it's got a readme.txt, a geodump.py, a geoload, a where.data, where.html, and where.js. And so the where.html and where.js are, um, those are the visualization part of it, and geoload is the spidering part of it, and geodump is the read the database, okay? So let's go ahead and uh, start taking a look at geoload.py. And so this is the restartable, this is the restartable spider. And if you look, it's going to be looking at a proxy of the geo API. So we have OpenStreetMap, right? There's the OpenStreetMap and we can search for things in OpenStreetMap, do this kind of geocoding by hand. And we're doing it every time we do a map search, a geocoding is happening. We're talking to geo API, which in effect takes the free data, but then wraps an API around it. And um, and so this this is what the API we're gonna get. But if, you, if you're gonna use it, you gotta get an account. So you gotta sign up. So what I've done to simplify things in this class is I've made a proxy for it. And this proxy does not require a key, but it has really, really fierce um, API rate limits, meaning that it slows down terribly if you use it more than what you should use it in this class. But that slowing down also is kind of fun because you are doing a restartable uh, thing. So, so, so you don't need a key to talk to this, it's just for this class. And so the, the protocol is pretty simple. You have a query parameter, which is the text location, properly URL encoded, spaces are encoded as pluses and commas are percent twos. Okay, so that's the kind of thing we got to do. So if we take a quick look back at our code, and we looked at this code in a previous, uh, we only retrieved one, now we're building a restartable process using a database. So we have this, this uh, prefix of, the, of it. Now, this is database. So we're going to create or open an existing database. And in this case, we don't yet have uh, a database. LS minus L, there is no database. You'll see the first time we read it, uh, start this, we're going to create this database. And we're going to create a simple table. Now, th the key thing is, is that all we're going to do is we're going to take the address that we looked up as the key and the JSON that we get back 
as a value. So in this case, Ann Arbor space, uh, Ann Arbor comma Michigan is the key and this raw data, which looks prettier, that is the value. That's what we're going to do. Because again, this is the restartable process. You want this restartable process to be simple and, uh, and restartable. And then if we continue down in the code, we see the pattern having to do with, let's uh, ignore certificate problems, having to do with the fact that there's not a lot of good certificates that are default included in Python. And so it's simpler for now. You, in production, you can figure this out a little bit better, but that just makes sure that our, our URL lib uh, stuff works. So just kind of, eh, there you go. It's unfortunate because when they fixed this thing about they didn't like the certificates, they had some problems, they just took them all out. So we went from, you know, a lot of good certificates and one bad one to no good certificates. But, and then everyone immediately went and ignored the certificates. Uh, uh, the law of unintended consequences. So let's take a look at this file where.data. So where.data, the idea at some point is you want to know the locations. So this is just the input. Um, to our, and this is just all the places, and we can, you know, we can add to this jerk pit and Arbor, Michigan. So that this is the list, the to do list in a sense, okay? So we're gonna, that's what we're gonna do, and I give you a starting point, and you're supposed to, in your work, add something to it. So we're gonna read this where.data. And that file had, I don't remember, 275, but you might have thousands of lines. And then we're going to read the whole file. And if we, if we get past 100 of retrieved locations, we're going to stop. And that's kind of to let our API settle down. You would change these numbers. And then we're going to take the address from the, from the line, which is just a text line. And then we're going to check to see if the address has already been retrieved. And we're doing an encode in a memory view because of UTF-8 and because the database is kind of outside of us. There you, there you go. And then what we're gonna do is we're gonna retrieve that record. And if the address was already in the database, at the beginning it's not because the database is empty, we're just gonna continue and go th zooming through this file, ignoring, not retrieving the ones that we haven't that we've already retrieved that are in our thing already. But if they aren't there, then we're going to create a URL. And this is basically the pattern of we're going to create a dictionary and we're going to say Q equals Ann Arbor, Michigan. But that Ann Arbor, Michigan has to be properly URL encoded. And so that's what this URL lib parse URL encode does. So that leaves, that ends up with a URL that looks like this. So it all gets concatenated together, but that encoding is something we don't have to write the code for. Thank heaven. Because even though it's easy to explain in a simple example, it's hard to do it right in all cases. So that we'll just let the libraries do that. So now we have a URL. So we open that URL. This little context equals CTX is the trick we use to ignore the SSL errors. Then we read it. But the stuff that comes back, of course, this here, if we were to look at the headers, let's see, we could look at the headers and we'd see that this is a UTF-8 application slash JSON. And so Python internally does not use UTF-8. Python internally uses Unicode. So decode says, ah, that stuff we just read, UTF-8, decode it into our internal format, which is Unicode, and there you go. And then I print out a debug statement and I increment my count so that each run only does all, no more than 100. Then I try to parse it using json.loads. And then I have a couple of sanity checks to make sure that like I got real data. You know, if it's not, if I didn't even get data, I should just complain about it and either break or continue. And then I am going to insert it into the database, insert into locations, address geodata, encode the, the address and encode the data and that's it i'm going to commit it and i'm going to pause sleep five seconds every everyone and that goes round and round and round and retrieves them and then at the end of the loop it uh, prints the number of features and sends a little message so let's just go ahead and run it i mean some of this code we talked about it's very just adapted from a couple of chapters ago 
So let's type Python geoload.py. So now it's going to start reading where.data and hitting the API. So you see, there you go. Now I'm going to hit control C. So it did the first 10, did the first 10, and then it hit this. And I just hit control C to blow it up. So if we look in our database now, let me start that. If we look at our database and we open a database and we go into, where am I? I've got to find where I'm at. You'll have to find where you're at. I just happen to know my folder names. I'm actually working in the, uh, you know, the, I'm working right in my main thing. There we are, I found that file. So that file now exists. And if I take a look at the data, I see I have one table, it's locations table, and I see the address, zoop, and then I see the data itself. There we go. So that's all I did. I just went through the first 10. And so they're already there. So now let's go run this thing again and just start it up. Now. What it's going to do is it's going to read all the file, the whole file of where.data, but you'll notice that it has the first 10 already done. So it just like says, got it, got it, got it. Right? So it's went very rapidly through the first 10. And now it's grabbed the next 10. And now it's grabbing the next 10. And again, let's just say your network goes down. The whole thing blows up. Well, let's take a look at the data. So we've got 30 now. Okay. And then you come back in the morning. This might be like 3,000 instead of 30. But you come back in the morning like, oh, it blew up. So what do you do? You start it up again. So now, now it goes, oh, I got all those. Here's the next 10. Here's the next 10. Okay. So now let's just blow this up. And... Let's briefly comment this out so it gets done faster. So now it's not going to sleep. It'll say pausing for a bit, but it's going to go. Rrr! So now it's retrieving. We'll see how many it's got to go to 257. And again, this is good data. It's going through 257 of these things. I didn't make you do 25,000 or a million, but this pattern could work. Okay. And so, um, uh oh, I wonder if. Oh, it went to 100. So I got to run it again because it had another limit. Only 100. Uh, we'll get there. Just keep loading. Just keep loading. I want to get to my thing where I have to mine. And there was an error. And you could have gone and looked at what that error was. Um, okay, I still have to get it again. Got to run it. I should have just changed the line. Okay, so actually hit this hit the... You can see it's slow. It hit the rate limit. <laughs> And okay, so let me put that sleep back in. Um, interestingly now, if we run it, we've been through, well, let's go look at our database for a second. Let's reload the database and we see that there we go and the jerk pit's already in there. That's the one I added. So there's 273 in here. Now watch what happens when I run this again. It's gonna zoom, it's already done because what it was doing there, let's take a look at the, the thing. Because what it was doing there is it was reading all of the things in where.data and it was checking Geodata SQLite. They're already there. So there was no need to go to the API. That's what I mean by a restartable process. You don't need to go back to the API. And so I can run this as many times as I want. And it, it's instant, basically, because only 250 things read from a database, which happens really fast. Okay. And so, so in a sense, the way you can think about this is this first phase is kind of done. We restarted it a couple times. We did this, we did that. And now we want to work on this second phase where we run GeoDump. And all that's going to do, let's take a look at the code. And so these two look very different. So GeoLoad worries about the fact that the API may blow up on you, or it may be slow, or you may run out of time. This tool, GeoDump.py, it opens a database. 
And then it just reads all this stuff and it starts writing this file, where.js file, and a kind of funky, weird thing. And it basically reads the first row, just reads the rows, and then it parses the JSON, and then it checks to see if that features is there, which is the outer, outer thing in the... Uh, let's go back and look at the... Let's go look here. Raw data, pretty print features is this outer thing. It's a, it's an array of features, but we're just going to look at the zeroth item and then we're going to look into side properties or let's look at it this way. So we're going to go into features and that's an array. So we're going to go into the sub zero and then we're going to go to properties and then inside properties, we're going to grab the longitude, the latitude and whatever else it is. So you can see these little, these little things where we're going into the, into the JSON, sub-features, sub-zero, because features is an array, sub-geometry, sub-coordinates. The first one and the second one, uh, the zeroth and the first is the longitude and latitude. Longitude and latitude, okay? So let's go ahead and run that. We're going to print it, and we're actually writing it into this where.js file at the same time. And this is also going to be really fast. So that was super fast, right? Because it, because it was only reading from the database and writing to where.js and then writing to, and so there's something wrong with this particular one. I'm not going to worry too much about that. But if I look at where.js, it's just a JavaScript variable that is all of this data with uh, longitude, latitude, and the name. And that's how you put pins on a map. And if you watch where.html, this is not an HTML class. I'm just giving you this. It does a whole bunch of HTML to uh, use Google, um, not, not Google, you, you use um, OpenGeo to visualize this stuff. Okay. So now all I'm going to do is I'm going to say open where.html. And there we go. So this is the map. So these are all of the retrieved locations. And if I click on one of these things, you kind of see this. So I can find my location somewhere on here. Okay, so I have one link in the University of Michigan is where the, it decided the center of the University of Michigan is. I'm not sure I agree with that, but hey, that's okay. I guess it's open street, man. But the second one was the one that I put on. And that is the Jamaican Jerk Pit, which is only one of my favorite restaurants in the whole world. So there you go, the Jamaican Jerk Pit. So my office is currently in this building right here. And I walk less than half a block to the Jamaican Jerk Pit. So that's basically a walkthrough for our restartable geocoding process and then visualization using OpenStreetMap. And I hope you found that uh, useful. Cheers. Thank you.